three different types of keys, four track, old, two track, and new two track. Four track key generation, this is the one I just spent a couple minutes on asking people if you're doing them, let everybody know how you're doing them. The determinator, I haven't used. I know there's a terminator out there that people do use to generate these from Tom. Uh, the leashing meter, I've Keep tested these, I've tried these, both the directory and the pick and the coder. I haven't had any luck. What's up, Brian? Does anybody? I was just talking to Julie about that. Okay. Now I have one that's got the two to double I Okay, so I mean, I was said. just playing. Yeah. No, just before. Good. So, okay. it's real easy. Not a good one. Now they've got a double game on both sides, it works. It works. It works. It works. I got that. I'm going to test that out. Oh, well, the other ones, I didn't have a whole lot. The way I always did it on the street, when I would just progress it. I'd progress to take the glove box out, I'd progress to two more cuts to get the trunk, then I'd progress to the trunk to get the progress the trunk to get the door, and then once you get the door, it's going to work the ignition. Okay? The door, the ignition has, I think, two cuts in it that are always the same, so once you get the door, they're like flipping papers. But that's just, again, making the key, everybody has a different way. Some people take the trunk lock out. I'm not here to tell you how to do it, we're just going to talk about information. Two track generation old. This thing, I think it's important for the simple fact that you can hand out. This is how I do it. Again, my way might not be the best way, but I'm going to give you the idea how to do it. Some of the guys that I work with, they use the pick reader for the two track, and they are great at it. I mean, they will just pick it right over and read it. And when you can get it to pick over with the leash sheet, it is uh, it's perfect. I mean, it's very simple to get it to read. I don't have a whole lot of luck with the big readers. But again, that's just me. I like the direct read um, with all the leashes. You can talk about Volkswagen 4. The problem I had when I was doing this, when I was trying to direct read um, with the leashy, I went, I've got through 30 different keys. I'm like, I know I'm getting this right. I know it's right. But I was getting these dead wafers in one, and then on some of them I get dead wafers in position one and two on the leashy reader. Okay, talking about just the numbers on the leash. So I would, <clears throat> on the very first one, I would read on the, the leash. I would get nothing here. It was dead. And you use a leash, it's no spring, no nothing. It's just dead on both sides. But I was getting perfect readings on the rest of mine. So of course I go into Instacode, no, 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 one key. Lord, you gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna do it again and again and again. Right, what's going on? So finally I got brilliant. I found a car with a key. And I decoded the key. And when I decoded it, the funny thing was, there was my cuts. I was actually not reading the last cut in the ignition. Where I was thinking that I was reading all the way to eight, I wasn't actually doing this. The reader isn't going all the way into the ignition. Does that make sense to everybody? And, and it's just it totally confused. Totally. And then once I got it, so then I go to another car, and here I'm missing two. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? 100% of the time it's working. Never had one that didn't, unless you're getting away for stick. You know, you know how this goes, this industry. You're going to have you know, here and there. But this is how I do it. I would buy both, pick reader and this, because some people are just going to pick it, and it's going to get us. Okay? Everybody understand this? Two-pack key generation. I don't talk about the new. He does actually. We don't care about the new because it's in the cast module. Well, the computer, the key. Okay. All the all the, the cast systems, which we'll go through like, you know, after the EWS, the key code is stored in the, into the computer of the car. This is the cast module. and This is the cast module. I don't take these out. I just want to show you. This is a cast module. So we're going to talk about EWS first. The reason I talk about EWS first before I start talking about the cast right here, <coughs> EWS box, cast box. Don't take this out. People are doing EWS in here, right? Yes? Anybody? Yes? Okay. No? 
the, the interesting part is if we take this out, the reason I'm talking about need everyone so much is because this system, this box is incorporated into this. Okay? So when people talk about, are you doing EWS? Yeah. Are you doing CAS? I said I'm doing EWS. EWS is in the CAS. Okay? It's just where the information is stored. <coughs> I put together some of these charts in my spare time going through it. I search a lot on the internet for information so that I can understand what, which ones have a four track, which one's a two track, where is the box location, the EWS box. And I get a lot of variances around. It's pretty close. This isn't perfect in my charts because I put stuff together and I get three different people and three different websites have almost the same information. They're split gears and stuff. But it's pretty close. And you'll see on this handout where I have on this this order from dealer, that's just because the environment that I work in, we don't really do four tracks because of the time to make the key. We just, we're doing auction environments. Okay? We don't have a customer on the street. For people out there in the street, of course, you're going to want to do it. Okay? It's money in your pocket. Five series location for the EWS. I only bring this one up because this is one of the more difficult locations for the EWS. Most every car out there on the EWS 3s, it's going to be on the driver's side, kick panel, take it off, and this box is going to be sitting right on the A pillar, the side. Make sense? A pillar, side of the car. It's going to be sitting right there. You can tell on here it's got one hole. You've got to take this out. They're going to be a Phillips and 8 millimeter or 10 millimeter. Most of all of them are 10 millimeters. Then you've got one over here that you just have to loosen the slide out. And I say that because you see my screwdriver right here? That one right there is into looseness. So when I take this panel off to take this out, they put a hole right there for you to put a screwdriver in. And I take the one screw off that's right here on the box that I have to take off, and then I put a screwdriver in here and loosen it. This is one of the most difficult ones. And after you do one, it's going to take you maybe, probably not even five minutes to get this out. Once you do a few, after you break the belt thing, but it comes over. You're right. You can get the belt out there. It's so easy. Yeah. 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 Uh, EWS 3 box, if you guys want, you can pass these around. The boxes, when they come, when you pull them out, I just take my fingers and I pop it open, put a little pressure on this, and just push on the little tabs. There's nothing more than you can show me. <laughs> and it just pops it. Okay? Change the EWS. Uh, they go bad, we put new ones in. 
it's going to be a fall. There's, you can't buy threes anymore. There are guys who can use used ones. Um, a lot of them go bad because from a mechanical because the battery goes back to the key ignition and it corrupts the, the duct, so you land up replacing it. Big thing with this is, on the street, you go to a job, you're not going to know if you're going to pull four out. Right? It's the highlight of that. If you're going to go out there, you're going to drive, you're going to make all that money, you've got an AK-90, you've got an editor, whatever, you pull the box out, without the cradle, you're yeah. going to have to stop it. Without the cradle, you're going to stop it. When you see that, uh, some, some people love to do it, God bless you. <laughs> this is just, that's okay. This is just location of the chip on the EWS3. I'm only going to talk about three with this, okay? Because with the four, you see it's just a crate. There's a chip ID. This one I bring up the 2D47J, because this is the one that people have said, and we talked about this in the other classes, that if you try to read it, it corrupts the chip or it does something to it. I've never had the problem with it. Um, somebody else was in here, they never had a problem. I had one person that said, yeah, he said two of them, that he tried to read the chip, and for some reason it just blanked it out. Okay? Don't, I don't know why, and again, it's just information. If you go to do it and, and this happens, sorry. <laughs> just so you know, if you're kind of cautious about this chip, then don't do it. Never had a problem. That, that much is a little an oh, no. EWS box is cheap, it's about 90 depending. The problem is the dealers don't want to sell it to you without a driver's license. And it's a pain in the ass to buy it, but, and it's about three days out. You have to sink it, you can't just put it in here. You have to program it, it's a programmable box, you can't just put it in. Okay. You have to code it with a factory tool, or there are so even, even if you stuff. have one. You, you, you should never need it, as a large one, you should never ever need it. Well, there's, Unless you damaged it doing it. Well, then you still can't do it, you still have to program it. But well, you can, if you read it. If, if you damage it, okay, if you, if you read the downside, you're down. And, because you can always try, if there's something wrong with it, you can always try to get it down to another one. But it will work. Okay, editor will put it back to factory, but you have to program it after that. So, like, I use editor, and I'll, I'll put it back to factory, and I can program it. But you it. can't use that dump and then write it to the AWS box and plug it into a program. No, it will. It will. Okay. It will. It will. It's good. The dump's got the code. Oh, you got it. Yeah. But if you try to read it, you get the dump and it's no good. Then you get screwed. A couple things with this cleaning the chip. Everybody does their own thing. Not a huge big fan of the fiberglass brush. You can see what it does here. I like to use the spell chip. The natural nature. They do. You see what everybody knows with me, right? <laughs> Denatured alcohol and Q-tip. I like it a lot just because I can just take a Q-tip, put it in the scene. It's like four dollars at Walmart. A huge quart or whatever. Q-tip and I just wipe it around about four times. It's just simple. Just an idea. Don't do that. Again, I mean again. It's, it's from experience. It sounds like. Yes, <laughs> I was trying to show you a picture. This is actually the AK-9. Okay. It's got a cutout here. All these classic big wood fixes, right? I don't know why I keep forgetting. It has a cutout here where the side of the chip has a cut on it, and the side of the the chip actually on EWS3 has a little cutout. So when it's going around, you can see it. Just so you know how to put it on. If you don't know how to put it on, the, the, the AK90 software actually shows you a picture and a big arrow. This is how you put it on. It just snaps on. You clean it, you snap it on. So at this point, Taking the box out, taking this out, and we've connected it. It's all it does. It's just so you know what side. So you know what side. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what side yeah. so you know what side. Yeah. just a cut from the chip. Yeah, yeah, it's just telling you how to put it on. It shows you a picture whenever you whenever you open up the software, which I'll show you in a second. It's going to show you which way you put it on. Oh, it one way. Yeah, one way. That's why. It's got a little the corners cut out. If you look at No, you gotta put it on the right way. Put it on the right way. But I mean, she's gonna show you a picture. That's what I mean. It's don't don't sweat that. That's why the little arrows are gonna show you. So now we've got the box out. We've actually connected it to our board. 
And then we're going to open our software. And now we're going to actually read. This is just checking it. You need to know what chip. The, the chip that I showed you, the 2D, you need to select what chip you're going to do right here. On. So you select what chip. There's your picture. You knew Chinese, you know that. See the dot? It's telling you what to do. Now all you're going to do is read the NRES. Must it read it? I do. I've never had a problem. Now what's doing is reading the EWS. Now this process, what's so interesting about this, when I talked at the beginning that this EWS system, that we have to pull a box out to read data, right? We have to pull this out to see it. This is incorporated into this CAS module, okay, on the newer CAS systems. So just keep that in mind. We're not going to pull this box out. We're going to go all through OD2. I mean, you talked about saving everything. <laughs> I never say, but I should. So, so we read. There's your VIN number of what you're saving. That's, I mean, that's we just read the EWS. So we pulled a box out, we cleaned the chip, we connected it, we read the EWS. Now we. Now what we want to do is, give me one second here. Now right here, this is your EEPROM dump form. I'm not an EEPROM person. I don't know really anything about EEPROMs and what they do. People that do, I'm sure you can do something with this. I just don't know about it, okay? But it is there. Now here, if you're saying doing a duplicate key for somebody, it's a duplicate, you need to know what space their other working keys are in so you don't write over them, okay? You can put it into the AK90, and then you hit test key. It's going to read their key and tell you what slot that key is. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to say we have no key, so we're going to make good money, and now we're going to write to our chip of the key of our new key. We're going to put the slot on here. It's going to tell you which ones are used and which ones are still new. They're unused, right? BMW system, everybody kind of understands what BMW is. When you order a key from BMW, they're going to ship you a key that is in the next available slot in their records. Right? So we're going to assume that nobody's ever touched this car before. We're the first ones. And if I went to BMW and got this key, they're going to give me key number five. Right? What don't we want to do? We don't want to write our key in key five. What do we just do to the customer? or whoever. Because now if you mess up and this doesn't work, something happens, who knows, and you go, sorry, just order from the dealer. And you already messed with this slot, you go buy a key and it's not going to work. Right? That's why you decided you're done. <laughs> That's why you decided you're done. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can write it back and you can put it back to what it was before you programmed it. What I do, and I suggest for everybody again, it's up to you. I always pick slot one, unless I'm doing a duplicate again, and there they have slot one. I do slot one for two reasons. I'm not compromising BMW system. We don't want to take what they have and screw it up, and then everything's messed up. It's already used. It's not going to matter if something happens and you mess something up. And nobody's going to know what you mess with it, <laughs> right? Because if I pull one of these dumps and I see use, 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 new, 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 used in 10, somebody's been messing with it. See what I mean? You can tell. I kind of like to stay hidden. Okay. So, two different transponders here is the EML, which, if you guys want any of these, take a look at. These are the road head keys. <coughs> these, these are the chips out of the remote heads. And I'm going to show you how to make your own um, keys, refurbished keys here in a second with those. The EML are, is the actual, and I'm going to show you the coil that's on it. I only use, I think, do you guys only sell the, with the 7935s, right? Okay. You, oh, you do, have, do you have ones with the EML, the originals? No, 7935. You do, 7935, okay. So, 44, ID 44. Okay. The uh, 7930, the 35s are when the chips are in there. I'm going to show you that too. The EML is an original, absolute BMW original that has the coil on it. I'll explain that, it'll make sense. All I do is hit right key. It's not going to do it. It's going to hit right key. It's going to write to the key, it's going to verify, say verified, and you're done with that step. So at this point, you've pulled a box out, 
We connected to it. We read the EWS already, got the file. We picked our slot one, and we wrote to a key. That's all we've done at this point. Not too hard. Now what we're gonna do, now what we're gonna do is write back to the EWS. So we're gonna take this data, okay, that we've done, and we're gonna write it back to the EWS. Make sense? Slot one that we wrote, that key. We pulled the data, we took data from EWS, put it on this chip, and now I'm gonna take the data from this that I put on this chip, and I'm gonna write it back to the EWS. So now everything is married. Make sense? Everything's in sync. It's gonna sit here and just write. Write and write, and then it's gonna verify itself. It's gonna check. So we wrote back, intermission. So we wrote back, we're done. That's literally it. We're gonna we'll plug this box back in. Remember the key in? You can, you can just start it. I don't. I put the key in, I turn the ignition off for about five seconds. Just to make sure. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you, have, sometimes, you, have, sometimes you get from when you think it's not proper. I'll leave it on even longer, I'll leave it on for about a minute. And it just lets just kind of gets everything kind of accurate. And the car starts. Not too hard. Hold a box, cleaned it, clicked a few buttons, put it back in, start the car. I missed a step by me. You handed me this chip just ran around my hand. How did you get that information into it? Put the, 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 the programmer, the AK90 or this, the editor. It has got an antenna running. So you would take it and you would just do. I didn't see this by the so I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do a video of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. if anybody has not used some of these tools, it's very Yeah, it's all it is, it's all these kind of tools. You would just take this, do this, do this, take this. This is an editor that goes into there. Yeah, it just goes into here. Like this. And then this connects to your computer. Make sense? Yeah. Obviously. Then this, this is an editor. You know that's editor. This one you don't have to clean a chip. I'm not going to clean a chip on this one. This one I have to, when it's going to tell me in the software, it's going to say touch, and there's a solder joint, and then you can't see it. There's a solder joint, you just take this and you touch it. And then it starts reading the data. But that's why I like the AK90. I don't have to do all this. The AK90, you saw that connector. I just clean it and I take this. Connect on that, and I just go, boom. and then I can do my stuff. Make sense? Is everybody with me on this? Did you always use a 44 chip, or is it a 46 chip? It's a 46. 7935. It's a 7934, yeah. So it's okay, so it's 34. It's 44. It's always 44. Unless, unless it's cast. It's unless it's a cast system key ignition. We'll switch it and show you now. Yeah, we'll go through the chips. Yeah. We'll go through the keys in our So, but the process, is everybody kind of with me? Anybody question? Or views of anything? So, you uh, you read the down and you uh, put the key on there and the program from the key. Mm -hmm. And then on there, uh, the know. next step on there is what? Writing it back to this. So, so, the the right. so mm -hmm. first program and write. Yep, read, write, write. Read, write key, write your bigger. So you're writing your wife's three steps. Okay. Yep. Is it the same procedure whether you're good, uh, all keys are lost or whether you're all All keys are lost. Even duplicates, you've got to pull the box. The same problem. Yeah, I'll pull the box. Just want to make sure that if you're, if you're doing duplicates, you read their keys. 
Okay, you don't want to take one of their slides. Okay. So if that's not, not wood you're not sure if it's EWS or CAS. Uh, how do you look it in? How do you know? You look up. Okay. Say you have the multi-tool. You you hook it up, and if it doesn't. If you look at a chart in the handout, like, yeah. it's, some of it's it's a little off. Um, so if you if you're not sure, you've got one of those weird split ears. I would just pull the bottom panel down. You know, the, the driver's side panel, like three four <coughs> screws. Some of them have a couple little extra ones. Just pop it down and stick your head up it. You see this box? It's EWS. If you look up into your like right here, is that right? right yeah, here. some of them are there, some of them you don't know, You'll see, you'll see this box. It's a cast. We don't, we don't take these out. No more. Demonstration only. Okay. So if you hook up your uh, multi-tool to the OE2 port, want to tell you if it's it connecting? If it's going to connect, this doesn't connect. No, no, no. No, it just doesn't connect. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's and I, easier than pulling that part. No, it's a couple Phillips. It's the bottom panel. It's like, you know, the, uh, the Mazda, the Mazda, or Honda, you keep the box, well, like the same panel, needs pop down. The pass the pass key's only on the Fox series, isn't it? A full, a full Fox, right? I went up to a 2009 X3, and I sat there for 15 minutes with my multi tool. I said, pulled that panel down, I looked up, son of a gun. I just, I was amazed, you know, but you can solve that problem real quick if you want to determine what he's asking about, determining EWS cast. I, I go by the chart that I have to a point, but mistakes, okay? And if not, I thought that I knew that I knew more than BMW and I was like, oh, it's got to be a cast. And I was demonstrating, of course, it never works right, right? I'm like, hey, let's do this real quick. No way is this 2009? Son of a gun, it wasn't EWS. <laughs> Cradle or solder, right? This is what I talk about. I can't solder. I can't. Obviously, I can't pick with the leech either, right? I, don't, I just can't do this. If you guys don't have a cradle and you're good at soldering, you could. You could solder the wires. The AK90 and the editors come with extra wires to solder. I can't talk about it, I don't know how, because I just don't do it. I just have, just get a crate. Only EWS4. Only EWS4. EWS3, we're going to do it with the chip. We're going to connect to the chip. But for EWS3 or 4, you're still using the same software. No difference. Okay? Who else? Who else run? What are you That's the one that they saw. 1897 bucks, saving two jobs, is paid for life. It works with AK90. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Works with AK90 and. and uh, nothing ever but the. Yeah, but how do you open up your good intro? What's the Alright, keep going. Uh, the chips. So we're going to talk about the chips. So people get their BMW keys that you have used. Okay? Two things about them. The remote head keys can be either EWS or they can be CAS. Okay? So if you have a box of them, you can have a mix in there. And they're different boards. Can you tell the difference? I mean, I look at it. I couldn't even know. Can't you read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. I usually take the used keys and I, I read it, and it's going to tell me actually if it's EWS or it's going to say cannot read it. If you want to refurbish. <clears throat> to refurbish it, you can see this is a 7935 chip that's in the shell. Okay? 7935. Only EWS. It's the only thing I'm talking about here. So when I'm talking about chips and numbers and stuff, I'm talking about EWS. I am not talking about CAS. Very important to understand that. So I'm going to make my own. So I'm going to take one of my keys that I got, that I cut this open, and I'm going to do this. Cut it open, and I kind of butcher some now and then. Okay, so you get a box. Bone rings, dremel slips. Did anybody ever cut one of these open? Did anybody cut a BMW remote key open? <clears throat> some of you do a really quick razor blade or something. I get this big dremel. <laughs> I do grinder and I put it in a vice table. 
all the way around it. So I knit one now and then. So what I'm going to do is to, so that this is no longer, um, event, um, the transponder on this board, the OEM, can no longer function. I'm going to take this coil off. This is the actual transponder chip that's on here, not this. That's just the coil that's for the power. Make sense? So I'm going to take the, the power source away from that chip because I want to use my now aftermarket chip. What are they? Four bucks? Five bucks? Yeah. So I'm going to snap that off. Next one. There's a coil on here. There's a coil on that. I literally take needle nose pliers and I just grab it and snap. That's it. Stick it in. Put my chip in. Put my board over top of the chip. Cover on. I got to refurbish. The battery on the back, kind of interesting. These batteries, you can touch, it's still good. BMW keys are rechargeable batteries while they're in the ignition. It's charging this battery while it's in the ignition, right? It's soldered on. If you take one of these apart and you can take this battery and pull it out, it's not a rechargeable battery. Make sense, everybody? And you've got your new remote, brand new. Just before you cut the gear, you said yeah. you don't stop. Put it on your RF test pad and test it. You're getting your frequency coming out of your remote before you cut it. Otherwise, you're going to cut it and you'll get it on. They do go dead and they won't pick up. So test it first. And as long as you're picking up your 315 frequency, you could do it. The battery does it. The battery does it. Some of them won't charge. Onboard programming the remote. Again, we're talking EWS. Okay? Cast system, we don't worry about this. The remote's programmed on board automatically. For these, it's kind of nice. I think it's in the handout, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of nice to have to do it. Somebody in another class questions about duplicates. So what if I'm doing a duplicate key and it seems like whatever I'm doing a duplicate, it's hard to add the second remote in? Got it. It works. To do it. You just have to, you have to be kind of quick with this when you're doing the second remote. Sometimes you'll start and you press the center button or the bottom button, you'll hold it down, press the middle button three times. Press the middle button three times, release them both at the same time, the lock cycle, you're good. Take your second key really quick, hold it down three times, release, hey, my turn. You shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to do that. I had a car set for 12 minutes. It would take one and then swap the other one, take that one, it would take this one. It finally worked. It was just a sequence. Yeah. And the other thing is that on the like the X files in it where you've got a little red pick up on the mirror, hold the key. If it doesn't work down here, hold it right up there. You'll get it where it goes. I've sat for half an hour trying to do a key and I can't. You know they said also you hold it to your left frame or to the mirror. I, I, I know the mirror. If it's got the red knob on the mirror, hold it right up there. And you'll be surprised. Sometimes you're sitting there, it's just something stupid as that. Walk away and you come back and it does it. EWS. Anybody? Question? Oh, right here. Do what? Both of the styles. Both of the styles. Yes. Two track and four track. The 44 The 44 The Yeah. Two track and four track. And then, and this is this is EWS. We're getting ready to switch gears. Everybody with me? This gets really easy now. Really, really easy. Because you're going to do this all this rest of this with the laptop. Okay? You're going to pull the key codes from the car. You're going to sit there with the laptop and you're going to do everything. Okay? Everybody loves that, I know. Cast system, car access system. Cast system. Hey, look. We got another one, don't we? It's got a different chip, a different board. That's why it's very important to understand that you have to know what you're working on and what you're using. If you try to use an EWS remote head in a CAS, it's just not going to work. If you try to use a CAS remote head in an EWS, it's not going to work. Two different chips, two different forms. <clears throat> For all your CAS systems, you're either going to have a keyed, which is a 7936, or you're going to have, there's three different models. You've got your, the, the normal model for your slot keys, 
one, three, five, seven is the majority of them that you're going to use the slot. Then you've got your seven series slot keys. This key is only for the seven series. That's it, 0, 02 to 08. This is your F chassis key. For your newer cars, your cast holes. And we'll kind of go through how to distinguish and stuff with those. But that's, that's it, it's the keys for the cast systems. EWS is incorporated into this computer that we are not taking out. I keep saying that because people are like, why are you taking it out? We're not taking this out. Demonstration, okay? This box, we have to take out to get the information. The, the CAS system, this box is incorporated here, but we don't have to take it out. We can go through OBD2 point. If they would have made this so we could get it, we'd all be really, really happy. We're still using AKM. System. EWS is gone. Okay? We're going to use a different tool. A different tool. More expensive tool. It's easier, hence, more expensive. I'm going to go through Mechanical key code is stored in the CAS, even if it is a key <coughs> model. Okay? 2004 5 series. Don't have to use a leash. You don't have to do anything. Hook up your laptop. Okay? No need to turn a key on. Everybody goes, got to turn, no, you don't. I have to turn the key on. No key, it's gonna read you the key code. So not only with the laptop are you gonna program this, get the key code, you're gonna do all this before you even put this key in the ignition. Are you with me? <clears throat> that one before the CAS4, I'm gonna go over a little more. CAS4 right now, we're good. Cast 4 is another cast system. Okay, I don't remove these. I don't do the cast 4s right now. There's just there's never a real good way right now to the OD2 port. There just isn't anything. <clears throat> People can pull those out, and you can do cast 4. Okay, information. Just because I don't do it doesn't mean you can't do it. Right? I'm just not a fan of pulling these out and doing it. Okay? Good. Your sis, your chart right here, pretty good. You're going to notice on the, the CAS system four. That's the most important thing. We're not going to talk about CAS four. We're not doing CAS four right now until we test that update. The new update. Seven point six is that. No. <clears throat> Next chart. Can you do the call? That's what everybody asks. How do I know, right? That's what everybody asks, which is fine. How do I know if I can do it? So you got that slot? Seven series, I just know. Does that have a slot? Sure does. 90% of them you can do. During the end of this, I'm gonna get to the meat and bones of all the stuff. Okay, you can't do this, you can't do this. If it does this, you can't do this. I'm gonna go over all that. This is the general knowledge until we get to the headache stuff, okay? Is everybody with me? It's got a slot, it's got a slot or it's a key model cats. Okay. Seven series only, this key is only for the seven series. 02 to 08, I have never seen a seven series I could not do with five minutes. Never, it's always five minutes. <laughs> but seriously, it's that easy, from start to finish. I did one uh, the day before I flew here. I did one real quick. Guy just needed a key real quick, it was hopped up. Super, super easy seven series. Don't ever turn them down. You love them. A lot of money. So, yeah, you're just passing these around. Quick question to make sure that I certainly know these directions. Um, so, yes, EWS is going to have a 7935 chip and CAS is going to have a 7936. Key models. There's some things in this that I repeat a lot, right? Because I see people doing this a lot. They're using the wrong key, or they're, they're out there trying to use leashes and stuff to make keys for these cars. And I look at them. Well, why are you doing this? Well, I gotta have a key. And you know, cast system. It's cast system pulls a key code. Here we go to the program. Again, the question, what can I do, what can I do, and what am I going to use, right? 
Everybody keeps asking. BMW Multi Tool. I use it. I like it. Everybody that has one loves it. Very simple. Very simple. AK300. I've got one of those. Everything you see up here, I've used. So you know. I've got, I've used. Right? AK300. Not up here to say something's bad or good. Okay? not as user friendly. I had a couple other people that had the AK300 and said they had a lot of problems. When, he, when he told me he had a problem doing a 7 Series, I was like, where is it? In a box. Keep it there. If it can't do a 7 Series, you don't need to have it. And the Abritus. I used the Abritus about four years ago. I was doing some testing on BMW back then. Uh, worked really good. Worked really good. Um, I don't know where they've come to this point. I know it's an expensive tool. I am not a big fan of when I'm using something to have all this other information, right? The Abritus has all this stuff it does. It does amazing stuff. I don't. I just want to make a key. All I want. Which is also I don't even know what this is. AK three hundred. Yeah, the 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 Abritus is expensive. You must want to look for the BMW package. Anything between forty five hundred and seven hundred and the other one. The tool for seven hundred and fifty bucks. Seven hundred and fifty bucks. What about the the user set tool? Nothing about it. Nothing about it. Most everybody got the same stuff. The only one person comes out with it, the other company buys it, steals their software, puts it on our website. Who sells the store? Google. Google. <laughs> <laughs> They, they're not, the multi-tool is not a club. No, they X, designed it. X-Force. Okay. X-Force actually. So, wherever you see them, buy them. You can buy them from other country, but it's the they work. They, they, they do, they work. They, and they, there are some things right now that I'm talking about with these some of these models and encryptions that I might be wrong because the new software was just updated. Yeah. Just, I mean, I was like, oh, no, I got to buy some BMWs. <laughs> I got to do that one day. Six software updates in the last six months. Yeah. Working on Free. That's what I like about free. free updates. Yeah, and they're always getting something. They're always getting a little further, a little further, a little further. Here's the answer to your question. Where do I buy the multi? Google. 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 Yes. Everywhere. Can you have it? I just go to, go to Google and type in BMW multi tool. And then you decide where and where you want to get it. No, nope, that's free. That's it. Once you buy it, free updates, that's it. You're done. Done. No, don't buy the Cast 4 antenna, the adapter for it just yet. Okay. I've got it, and I need for it, for it. Because right now, it can't pull the data from Cast 4. Okay. So the Cast 4 antenna for this tool, there's no need right now. Unless you've got another tool that you want to do a dump to pull this out, then you can take the file from this load it into the software and then program it, the key. But this won't actually pull it from the car information. For cast four, okay? What's that little uh, red thing for? Dongle. It's, it's it, it, it activates. If you can't open the software without that install. Okay? Don't lose that, and this is good. It's good luck calling up going, hey, I love my dongle. Can you send me another one? Cool. So now we're going to do some videos. Everybody likes videos, right? This is the software. Now I want you to keep in mind on every one of these videos. You remember the EWS videos, right? Three steps. Three, three, three right, EWS, right. see? Because I told you this is incorporated into the cast now. You getting me? We're going to read it. We're just going to get it in a different way. We're going to get the EWS data in a different way. Instead of pulling the box out and doing it, we're just going to do it to the OP2 port, which we all love. Right? <coughs> Play it. Jenny. Jenny Bass. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's going to come up. I always pick auto tech. You wait. Play it. Wait one minute. Is it playing? Yeah. Let's play. Let's play. It's connected to the car right now. We're waiting. Connecting the cast system. It's connected to the car. It's that quick. It's got your VIN number, it's got your production date. 
your systems on it when the car actually gives you a year, the year, month, and day that car was produced. Okay? There's a few things on here that you're going to use. You can do, again, EPROMs on some of them. Some of the encrypted you can. Okay? But you can, again, read an EPROM. For me, the only reason that I read EPROMs on these is I'm, I'm testing stuff with cars, seeing if it'll call a program, if it won't. Because what I can do is if once I've written to those keys, I can actually unlock that key for if I use this software to lock it. Okay? You cannot go buy a box of used keys. Think you're gonna open this software, click unlock key, and unlock these keys. It doesn't happen. Okay? You haven't used this software to program a key to a car to unlock that key. Okay? Just want to make sure everybody's clear. So, you know, I've seen people going, oh, I can, I can carry you, you can unlock all the keys, right? You can't if it's one you can use this software to do it. Okay? And you have to do an EPROM dump to do it. The other three buttons that I'm going to use, <coughs> sync DME to CAS, sync CAS to ELV, and the key learn. If everything goes great, I'm never going to touch these other two, I'm just going to touch this one. Keep going up there. Get a minute. <laughs> now we're going to do the key learn function. Key learn function is only two screens to all this software. Yeah, this is why I like stuff like this. I just, I just, I just want to make a key, right? Like the abridas, all these different functions. I don't understand them. I don't, I don't get it. I just want to do this. It's going to give you two options of add key or lost key. It's talking right now. Add key and lost key. I only do lost key. That's all I do. Now and then you guys might get an add key. If you click add key, you have to have another key. Okay? If you're doing a, something for a customer's car. And if you're going to do a duplicate for the customer's car, make sure you get their key and put it into the ignition. Okay? Even if it's a key one, put that key in that ignition. Because what's going to happen when I read this, it's going to tell me what position that key is that's in the ignition. Make sense? Remember EWS? I said, hey, read their keys. You see how all this stuff is all incorporated. If you understand EWS, you've already got this. Okay. Lost key. It's going to sit here for a minute. Up here, it's going to pull my key code while it's talking. It's already got the key code. There's a key code. HA00074 something. Okay. Pulled it that quick. I got my key code. If I would have had a key in the ignition, it would have told me what that key was. And that little thing that came up, that little pop-up that you can't read, it just said, take the other key away from the ignition now. It's red. It's good. I've already got all my information. All the slots. I can tell you which ones are used, which ones aren't used. I can tell you what chips. Up here on some of these, I actually see on some cars that I mess with, 7936. When I see a top one, it says 7936. I go, oh, that was a valet key they issued for that car. So then you have 7945s and all different types of remotes. We don't care about those. Okay, don't worry about those numbers. I just want to see what slots are taken. I look over at the type and I see PCF, 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 and I see F, 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 F. That means that slot's open. Okay? I also see down here, I look a little further and I say unknown, unknown S. Hey, somebody's been messing with this car. Why is a chip written in that eight slot when seven and six are open? Now you see why I use slot one. You would never know that I'm touching this car. If you start doing this stuff, not only are you compromising the BMW system, but you're also leaving yourself out there if something happens. I have not yet damaged the car doing any of this, except one time. And that's, and that's what I was playing with the car, doing some EEPROM changes, it's my fault. I was doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing. Okay, I was reading and writing and doing this and doing that, and then nothing worked. <laughs> I mean, literally, the car was like, yeah, no, not doing it. Wouldn't talk, wouldn't do anything again. Question? Yeah, I got a question. Let's say you always like lost slot. The guy comes, customer comes in and says, I lost all my keys. But if you, that slot one, we knew had a key in there at that slot one time. Damn. Then all of a sudden, he, six months down the line, he finds that key. Key no longer works because you have a spot. What? Is that a true statement? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer it. It is, it won't work. But what's better 
He will come in back and say six months later, saying, Shit, I found my key at Wild Can you pay your woman back? <laughs> if you saved your dump, you can make his original key work and you can take your key and write it into a second one. Save your dumps. Okay? Secondly, what the, the other scenario is he doesn't come back to you. And he goes to the dealer for some reason, non-related, or to a mechanic, and we go to change the EWS and we change it, or we order a key. So now we're ordering key number eight, because they, they lost seven keys along the way in 10 years. Now that key doesn't work. Well, the dealer is going to put in an engine computer, they're going to put in a CAS unit, they're going to put in $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 worth of parts. Please believe me that customer, he won't mind it if you reprogram his key. You can take his key and put it back into that slot. The best thing you do with it, if you have customers, maybe if you have kids or whatever, just tell them, hey, Find an extra key or something, give me a call. So okay. you know, what you're saying is once you have a key made, you can change the slot. So you know, you know. I, I back up my I back up my dumps. I name them with the last seven of the VIN number. Okay. So I can always check which car it is. It just I, if, if you're a case, you know, you put in one and then for some odd reason you would need to move it, that's a whole new episode. You told yeah. me yeah. you yeah. your yeah. keys were lost. Is your fault? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Or here. What you what is here is I give you a discount. I give you 10 jobs. I'll give you another 100 bucks and yeah. throw you money again. It's good for business. So it's not a How many people are funding me and call your best? No. Okay. So again, what we've done here, remember, read EWS on this. We just did this with OD2. We just read the EWS. Now, on the second part of the EWS was write key. Pick our slot. Pick our slot one. And then I'm going to get prepared dealer key with programmer. And EWS, this is my programmer, right? And I use this to prepare it. On CAS, it has the little plug-in antenna ring. You saw the picture, it had the little antenna ring. That's your program. You just take the key and you put it in the little antenna ring. I usually do it and I just kind of stick it on the floor you know, with the key in the middle. I'll take this and put it in the antenna ring right here and I just kind of sit on the floor. I don't want to stir it. Pick slot one, prepare to do a key with programmer. It's, this information bar down here is going to tell you everything that's going on. Put the key in the programmer, it is, it's sitting there. It's always going to ask you, does it have keyless? I'm going to go over keyless a little later, okay? I've never had luck programming a keyless key with these. I've only tried it a couple times. We tried it once, just didn't do it. We'll go over that in a minute. I always just pick no, okay? We'll go over that keyless. <coughs> Stop. Yeah. It's done. If I was talking, it programmed the key. That quick. Just like BWS. Pretty simple, right? You put the key in, you're pressing a button. So we've read the data from the car through the OBT port. We picked a slot that we want to program our key. We put our key in the antenna ring. We hit program, uh, make the other key with programmer, and it made it. But now, it's, now, but it's only programming the key, not the other Oh, I'm sorry. Back, there, there's the antenna ring with that yes, programmer. With the program. Okay, yeah, right. Just plugs in. Yeah, right, right. right. Is this a separate tool now that we're using? We're the doing the BMW, the multi-tool. Is yeah. the multi-tool used for both? Just the different adapter? No, no, no. 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 The AK90 is a $70 box that you use for this. The BMW multi-tool is a $700 if I'm telling. That is just a cable. Now, the new recordings you've seen more with multi-tool. Right? The, the multi-tool the multi does have an EWS adapter. It does. So you can buy the EWS. It, but it's this adapter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, got the, it's got the connector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, can, it's, but it's 80 bucks. Right. <laughs> okay. 50. That's more than that. I know. I'm cheap. Okay. <laughs> so now what we've done is we've EWS, we took the box out, we've read the EWS, we wrote the key, we wrote EWS. Three steps, right? Here, CAS. We read the CAS EWS. We wrote the key, the slot one. Now what are we going to do? Right. Right. Okay, so now we're going to hit add key. So now we're going to take that data with the key still in the antenna ring, and we're going to push that data back. 
This is an extra step that I do. So now, when I hit add key, this is a step I do. You can, in most cases, take that key that I just made and locked and put it in, and it should start it. Okay? okay. Should do it because you've written information and it needs to see that right. slot. Right. Okay? This is an extra step because it takes a couple minutes. I don't like to do extra stuff when I'm doing it. I like to just sit there and do it and know it's going to work. Right? I don't like the what ifs. I'm not a big what if person. So I'm going to force that information back to you. So when I put that key in, if you're ordering a new BMW key, sometimes you have to put it in a couple times so it takes it. Five times? I had to put it in a couple times so it would take it and take the information. Because what it's taking is just like we did just what BMW does at the cutting facility. We did the same thing. Okay? We took the password information for that slot, stuck it on that key. So that car sees that information and it's gonna go, hey, you should be for slot one. Okay? Sorry, there's two ways of doing it. There's two ways that go on in the background. The, the two different tools. I, I don't use an AK90 or but what happens with, like on an EWS system, you're taking, you're reading the dump so you can access the information. It's got a table with all the keys are preset right, in there. They've got a is, hard, it's got a hard code and there's a rolling code. If you pull up the screen where it's got the X down the side, those are the rolling codes. Okay? The fixed code, the transponder code is there. So your, your chip doesn't match that transponder code. So you have to configure your transponder to either match that code, or the other way of doing it, the harder way, is you can go and you can read the transponder, the number, the ID number of the transponder, and you can write it into that slot. Okay. EWS Editor allows you to do that. That's to answer your question. I could write that key back in to a different slot. So what I do, because I'm very, very simple, I like to press buttons. Yeah. See all that? I'm going to hear them in outreach. <laughs> I, I, I press this button, <laughs> it does this, and then I press add. <laughs> this, yeah. I'm saying, yeah. why don't I do that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I press buttons, it does this, and then I'm going to show you one of the stuff that when it doesn't go right. Yeah. What happens? This is not so complicated, it's just pushing yeah, buttons. It's buttons, that's all it is. Then and you start with the transponder. Or does it have key lift? Key no. So you it doesn't have key lift. So you can't see it. Hey, 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 <coughs> What's key list? We're going to go with that in a minute. Okay? Again, yeah, you'll understand it in a minute. That's why I don't like doing it during it because you don't, it's not, it's not something we need to talk about at the moment. We're just doing the simple steps of programming a key. Okay? Read the data, read the data, wrote the key, we're going to write the key back to the car. Make sense? Very simple. This takes a couple minutes. You gotta have a key back in there. This pop-up always comes up. Take the other key away from ignition. Yeah, we know it hasn't been in there the whole time, but it's always gonna have a pop-up. Take key away from ignition. Take key away from ignition. I've tried on this software a couple times, it's still doing its thing. To use the prepared dealer key with the ignition switch. If you start doing on YouTube stuff and other companies that they actually use the ignition switch to program the key instead of the antenna ring, okay? I just don't. I'm not a fan of that key. <coughs> Again, I'm giving you information. I'm not telling you exactly that my way is the way it has to be done. You'll find different ways. You'll find different tricks. This is just your general information to understand what things are doing. Okay? Is everybody with me? Okay. So we've added the key. The key's in there. When I take that key out now and I put it in the ignition, it's going to start. I'm running this. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running this. Okay. So I'm not really doing anything here. I, I, the key's locked. The key's ready. I'm just doing an extra step that I do, like the right EWS. Just doing an extra one on this. Read it, write it, write it. Either one. Cast EWS. Eat it. Eat it. Read it, write it, write it. We're going to have this presentation online for you guys. Later on, if you want to go back. Oh, okay. okay. Good. So, you know. It says writing data success. When I did it, it's done. It's written. Okay. Pick the key out. Put it in. The car's going to start. When you put it in, the remote's going to be programmed at the exact same time. I love that. Did you wait five to ten seconds? Uh, you know, you know, you know, just pick it in. Pick it in and start. Yeah, because when I write everything back, it, it thinks that key's already been in there forever. Yeah. It already thinks, oh, I bet it's been in there for 20 years. I don't know any different. 
right? Three steps. Thanks. Okay. Now for the what ifs. Because this is the same thing. Everybody tells you how great stuff works and how wonderful things work, <coughs> but they never want to tell you about all the pain the butt things that happen that you're going to screw with and be there for three hours messing with something, but I know that it's not going to work for you. Right? You're going to be there doing it, and you're going to go, Jerry said, you know, I showed me this, you just click this. Let me show you all the stuff that can go wrong. Right? Whatever goes wrong, you didn't hurt anything. That's what you have to understand. All this stuff that I've done at this point, doesn't matter. If nothing works and you throw your hands up and go, I'm done with this car, and they go to the dealership and they get a key, it's going to start the car. Okay? Don't worry about this. You haven't done anything to the car. <clears throat> Encrypted CAS systems, you're three plus on it. People ask a lot of questions. How do I know? How do I know? Looking at the car, you can't just look at the car and know what software is on this car. Right? The encrypted systems, the, the, this, the actual multi-tool will actually tell you this software is encrypted. It'll actually tell you that. It's encrypted software. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Most of them, you can do. When it says encrypted, I've had a few that says encrypted, and I did the read, write, write, car started. I was like, well, what's a big deal about encrypted? Right? It was just an old software of encryption that the company had probably cracked a while ago. Then you're going to get into some newer systems where they, maybe the software has been updated a little bit. They haven't quite gotten the workaround for it just right. Because you know in our industry, we're always trying to catch up to the manufacturer. And the manufacturer keeps changing to stop us from getting here. They're like, oh, you're gonna, you guys are doing it? Oh, no, we're going to update this. So now they have to figure out a new one. A couple things that I've seen is, if you get to the steps on the software, and it's going to say, this is encrypted software, you're going to have 16 attempts to start the car. Don't worry, follow the directions. Okay? You're not going to hurt anything again. This is why a lot of people, well, I don't want to do this. Just do it. No big deal. Disclaimer, if something happens, it's not my fault. <laughs> okay? Oh, don't hurt. If you keep clicking those buttons and something happens, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to just make sure done. Okay? I've never heard anything or something. The pre-process is going to ask you, do you want to pre-process it? Process it? Yes, I do. And it's going to say, in the antenna ring, it's the antenna ring, and it's going to come up and say, pre-process, okay. Do I know exactly what it's doing? No. It doesn't matter. It's what the car is doing. Right? How it's getting to that point, if I can click buttons and make it work, I'm a happy guy, right? I'm not going to diagnose the car. It's going to say, pre-process, okay, put key in the ignition. Okay. Does the car start? And it's going to say yes or no. Nope, doesn't start. And it's going to say take key out. Take, um, insert key. Is you going to click no? It's going to go try two. Put key in ignition. Does the car start? The car doesn't start. Take the key out. Press no. You're going to do this up to 16 times. Simple, right? Click, 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 click. One of the times the cars are going to start. Okay, it's going to start. And you're going to go ah, oh, yay! This wasn't for nothing, right? It's going to start, and then the, the, another pop-up is going to come up. It's got directions on screen. It's going to pop up and say, leave key running, leave car running for 15 minutes. Go back to the main screen and click sync cast to DME. Remember on that first screen that popped up that I said, it said auto connect, and it pulled up the VIN number, pulled up the information, and then on the bottom of the corner it had key learn on the very first screen. And then I said there's two little buttons that say, Sync cast the ELV, sync cast the DME. It's giving you the directions. The directions I can say on main screen. Click this button up to 10 times. So you go back to the main screen while the car's running and you click the button. Failed, failed. Just do it 10 times. I don't know what it's doing. Told me to do it. So I did it. Right? Car ran. Leave it running for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, shut it off. Everything works. It's a process. Right? It's not rocket science and stuff, it's just a process. Now, if you get one that comes up and says you have 64 attempts, just shut it. You're done. Don't even try it. It's not going to hurt anything. You can have at it. I sat out there for 64 times. It just doesn't work. What happens is after you're done, you're going to be all excited <coughs> because when you put the key in the slot, the steering wheel is going to unlock, the dash is going to come on, and you're going to hit that start button, and that car is going to crank its butt off. <laughs> they ain't start. But it's going to sit there and crank, and crank, and crank, and you're going to go, it's not the car. It's not the car, it's you. 
okay? Stuff isn't synced up right. There's something we talk about this a little bit, right? Encryption and how it works. Again, not going into all that. I don't know everything about it. I know there's 64 attempts. I've never seen them. Now, the new software download. I don't know. They might fix that. You might be able to do all cast threes and fours right now. I don't know because I just saw the download and I haven't done it. I'll know next week. What's the latest software for the 7.6? 7.6? No. Which I just saw today. Science. Anybody got a BMW here? You can play with? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 somebody. Yeah. 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 Somebody does love this one. It's a rat <laughs> Where are you getting the software updates from? It's free on the internet. You just go to the, the help button. You, just, you don't even have to download it. You go to the help button and it says update. You click update. It downloads it. Doesn't on the software. I download it. Again, preference. Everything is preference, but it's all free. Um, so it's not a hack tool. They, they did design <laughs> yes. it so they are working on it. That's the, the nice thing about it. They Michael Brown is they they engineering it. So as they're going along, they're just adding it in. And, and look, there's no tool that does everything. You kind of get caught. I don't care what tool you use, there's cars you can't do. Always. F series. You see that? No slot? It's no slot, right? Everybody said I'm going to tell you what you can and can't do real easy. See that? Slot. See that? So you put the key up. I can't do it. I'm going to be too hard. I don't know what to say. Can't do it. This is your new key. There's no good way to do the F series right now. Okay, right now. At this moment, right now, to do the cast for the F series, you got to take this out. Do you want to take this out and do it? God bless you. Have fun. I don't know really anything about it. There's guys here at the back here that are doing this. They're taking this out and they're doing the dog and they're writing the key and it's starting. I'm just saying I don't do. Again, I'm not here to say what you can and can't do. Just giving you the information. Okay? If you want to start doing these, there's some R270s, there's some stuff, you know, tools that you can take it apart and however you do it. I don't know. Again, I don't do the dumps. But it will do it. Okay? Just not with the tool through the OD2 port at this moment. Does that make sense to everybody? No more sense talking about F series. Can't do them. Cast four module. You can see it says right on it on all the modules. No, no, no. Can't see yeah, that. It says cast four. Am I that line? Yeah, cast four. Yeah. It says cast four. <laughs> <laughs> this one says cast three. Right? Okay. Here's some good stuff. <sighs> Couple really interesting thing, interesting things that this software will do. If you see a BMW, or a BMW and somebody calls you, just out of the blue, let's just say, you go, I've got a steering wheel lock. Probably not, because who would know to call a locksmith when my steering wheel is locked? You might get it. I don't know. That software, if this comes up, or if you're programming a key, you program the key to the car. Remember the what ifs that can happen? This is a what if, right? I programmed the key to the car. They didn't have a key. I stuck it in the ignition. Jerry, it didn't do anything. I got this. Without this coming unlocked, the action isn't being come on. The car's not going to start. It's got, you know, the steps. Put the key in, unlock the steering wheel, start the car. I can't unlock the steering wheel right now. Because for some reason, it's not talking to each other. And that tool, the really nice thing, remember again, the buttons on the bottom I'm talking about, on the main screen that said key learn, sync cast to DME. Everybody with these buttons? There was another button that said sync cast to ELV. The ELV is just locked. So on the main screen, again, I like clicking buttons. I'm going to click that button, sync cast the LV, and it's going to reboot. Literally, it says restart. It's going to take probably 25 seconds. You're going to hear the, the lock go beep, beep, beep. Magic happens, steering wheel locks, car starts. How did it do it? No. <laughs> Press the button, and it works, right? I always look at it. I always look at it as it's taking them, and it just, it's resyncing them back together so they're talking. The lock in the cast. Happens every now and then. We've had keys that we ordered from BMW, like from BMW. We ordered them, we got them, and we put the key in and we got this. We just we ate a lot of money. That was it. We ate a lot of money. 
on BMW keys because we get this and they won't pay for the key. So it's gonna start. I'm not paying you. Tools solve a lot of problems. A little button. And, and it really had nothing to do with us. Nothing no, with nothing. You did. We ordered from BMW. Cars, but how do you yeah. do it? If you get this in the center dash, wrong key. Okay. So if you program a key and you put it in the slot and this comes out in the center dash, key ain't programmed. No matter what you think or what it says, it's not programmed. Get a different key and lock and do what you need to do. When the dash comes on, everything, you don't get a, a warning signal. Comfort access. So this is where we're talking keyless, right? Everybody hears different words. You hear props, you hear keyless, you hear comfort access. Pretty much the same thing for all of them, okay? The comfort access is keyless, okay? Where your key can be in the pocket, even though it's got a slot, okay? The key can be in your pocket and you can still get in the car and you can still start the car without putting the key in the slot. Makes sense. Why do they want these call props? One word for everything instead of confusing everybody. Non-comfort key can be programmed. So even if the car has the comfort access is activated, not all of them, not all BMWs have it, you can't program them to all of them. If it's... Did you guys hear that announcement, Jim? The raffle and tickets for the fight tonight? Uh, I think they're playing over here at the casino somewhere. Yeah, let's go. Um, so we got five sets of tickets. So you got a, a Y. Do you sell tickets? No. Everybody gets a... The raffle and tickets. tickets. Everybody gets a raffle and tickets. 41. Huh? How much are the tickets? 40. 40. 40. So Can you get pay per view in the uh, hotel rooms? Okay, so just let me have a chance. about this for a minute. <laughs> we got a screen. Who's got the yeah, 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 screen. I got a <laughs> <laughs> Barry, we got the keel? <laughs> hey, wait, this is you're going to publish this. You talk about this again, everybody. What fight is it? Back yet. So, anyway, if you have a chance, go to the keeper. Okay, this is the one that I've ever seen. Okay, I'm going to four. And you already have my own. You already have my own. I think so. Make sure you edit this, okay? Oh, yeah. How old is this? Really? What? You had a camera. I was just kidding. Copyrighted, I was just kidding. So. Fob, fob's not required to be inserted in the car. When it's inserted, it's gonna, if the battery in the fob is low, I'm gonna show you a picture in a minute. It's gonna tell you on the car. And I'm gonna explain that to you too. <clears throat> on all of these, remember the rechargeable battery, PWS in the casket, it has a rechargeable battery. So when this is in the ignition, a slot or whatever, it's charging this battery the whole time it's in there, okay? With the keyless, it doesn't have a rechargeable battery. Obviously, because it's in your pocket. Can't charge in your pocket yet. Next. Here's your picture. How do you tell if it's got comfort? Here's a battery cover you pop off. That's it. It's not rocket science and stuff. You go to somebody's key and they want a duplicate, and you go, oh, you got comfort access. And I've never had luck programming comfort access, I'm just telling you. Okay? You guys might figure it out. It just happens, right? I wouldn't say, oh, let me program you another one with comfort. I would say this, I can program you a key, but it's not going to be the comfort access, it's going to be the state of the key that you have to put in the slot. Let's go the road. Absolutely. Yep. So, on the car, on the dash, you're going to get Yes, Jason. Simple. You're going to get that little symbol to say that the fob is getting low and you need to change the battery. For the comfort system. Not a whole lot of cars have it. They really don't. Does that make sense a little bit? After you add the key, their comfort access key is still going to do what it's supposed to do. Absolutely. They, they want more. Yeah. And, Absolutely. and you can only have two comfort access keys on the car, even at the D. So you can disable it. You can disable it. Yeah, I know I will then, but yeah. I only have two. The um, interesting one that I was really worried about what you're talking about, I did a 2012, uh, 2011 or 2012, a duplicate key. And I was still testing this out. Scared, and it was a duplicate. This guy's like, hey, duplicate. I'm like, yes, you get to test it out. It's 2012, and I'm like, oh, this is not going to go well. Right? So, I hooked up to his car, and this is when it came up with that. It doesn't do it anymore, I've noticed. It doesn't come up that's usually when it downgraded. 
flash file, which we're not going to talk about right now. But ask me, do you want to downgrade the flash file on the, on the car? And I'm like, no, I don't want to screw this guy's car up. And I went, no, that was yes. And it started flashing his car. And I'm going, oh, no. And this guy started telling me all about this stuff in his car. Oh, this guy logged in from Massachusetts. He sent me a cable. He personalized my car. It does all this stuff, my navigation. And I'm going, and here I am. <laughs> right? I'm going, I'm going, it takes 45 minutes. It's like, make sure your battery charger and your, your computer's got power and all this stuff. And I'm going, I'm looking at the guy and I'm being all confident going, oh yeah, this is normal. This is normal. And I just bought a car. I was so worried that all of his personalized settings, everything was going to be messed up. Thank goodness, nothing or everything will do. I don't know what it did. I don't know what happened, but I was nervous. 45 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I was nervous. <laughs> make, make sure if it, if it does ask you if you want to downgrade the software in the car, what you're doing is you're changing the software version on the car. So let's say if it's got version 53 and the software only works with version 48, their software, they'll downgrade the software on the car to 48 so you can program the key. If you do it, make sure you put a power supply on. Not a, not a jump. Just make sure you because if you still got a power. power car and something goes wrong, you buy on computers, okay? Remember the if. A, a new BMW has 108 computers on them somewhere there, and then some. You don't want to be buying computers, okay? I've done 13 computers on a car, all in excess of $1,000 a computer. Don't go there. Don't touch it if you don't put a battery. Disclaimer. Keys are fine, but if it asks you to downgrade it, you don't know how long it's going to take you. The software we're talking about here, ISTAP software, software that's on the car. Don't want to get into big details about this. Okay. <laughs> here's, here's, what I, here's how I, I say this about the software. This is the software that the dealership uses to talk to the car and does all the stuff. Like anything, I use this as my analogy. It's going from XP to Windows 7. It's software. Firmware. It's an update. And again, the dealerships are always updating the software. Um, Ford, we, we use Ford all the time. And every three months, we have to download a new version of Ford, a new version of Mazda, so that we can keep doing and keep up with the OEMs. We're using the aftermarket equipment. So we're always trying to catch up to them, right? Well, if you're the kind of way out, you go, hey, I can catch up, and I'll just take you back down to my level. Okay? Not a fan of this. I'm not. How I talk about the slots and everything, I like keeping things the way they're supposed to be. All right? If people decide to start doing this and changing firmwares and stuff, that's on you. I've done it, testing, I don't do it anymore. I just, I don't like it, okay? I don't like the idea of, of downgrading somebody's car, right? <clears throat> when a car goes in for service for BMW, if something's been changed and it can be a 2004 BMW, CAS system, right? It could be 2004. And it had a computer change. And when the BMW changed that computer in BMW, they have to now flash that computer to the car. Well, they don't just do that one computer. When BMW does it, they do it with the whole car. It's like Steve was saying. It's the whole car. It's one unit. They don't just do one. They do everything. So just because it's an old car doesn't mean you're going to go out there and get this car done. They could have updated the software to a version that this other company, being the multi tool, just hasn't got up to that point yet. Does it kind of make sense to everybody? Software is what's limiting what we're doing. Software, not hardware. Software. This is the software that the multi. Uh, <coughs> no, no, no. This is the this is a BMW. This is the OEM software. Integrated service technician technical application. Is there is the factory schedule? Okay. So is the P is the factory programmer, is the D is the diagnostic tool. And it's just the level of the software, the version level of it. CAS is first every session. So even if they change one module, the first thing that's going to be done is the CAS. Go. Activated EWS4 in the CAS3. Still working on this. A um, little confusing to me just because I it's very hard to figure this out on my level of reading documents. EWS4, you notice that the EWS4 box, right? 
We have to use a special crater because the crater because they changed the chip and it's got different encryption software, all that good stuff on it. Well, the AWS is incorporated into the CAS, correct? You know this by now, right? I don't care if it's the CAS. It's the whole kit caboodle is all AWS. Okay. Well, they can actually activate the AWS four on CAS. Don't know how they do it, which gives an extra level of security to the car, right? More encryption. We've seen this a lot where we've programmed the key, literally everything works great. It doesn't even ask you to do attempts. I'm not kidding. It doesn't even ask you. You just make it, you put the key in, and that car will crank, 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 crank. Remote works everything. Because they have an extra level of security on the CAS system, it's just not let, letting everything talk. <clears throat> Show your computer, order key. Okay? Some things you're going to have, you're not going to do everything. Totally honest here. You're not gonna. 90%. You're gonna have some that you just can't do. But if you know that some of these little situations come up and you kind of understand by seeing it, at least you're not out there for three hours. Right? You went out there, you did your thing 64 attempts and go, ma'am, sir, sorry, um, we're gonna keep it. I'm not gonna sit here for three hours and not get it. Yeah. Now the new version, 7.6, again, I don't know. Exciting. Because they usually do stuff and it really makes a difference. Okay. Guess what that key is? What's it look like? Seven series key. It's kind of weird, right? <laughs> Mini Cooper, guess what? BMW. Do those two. Same issues, same software, same everything. Don't be scared of them. Land Rover. BWS. Some of them. Okay. 05 and down, 06 and down. So it's not just the BMW, you see, there's other stuff. 